So if you're still wondering if solar is worth it in California in 2022, I'm here to say yes, it is, especially when the rates for electricity are skyrocketing right now. I am sitting outside on this beautiful sunny day. I actually drove out to Folsom, California, which is just past Sacramento from the Bay Area, uh, to go to a solar installation for a homeowner who actually found me on YouTube. On my channel, I make solar videos about uh, residential solar and commercial solar. Uh, ways that solar energy is going to help you benefit financially as well as help our planet um, be a little bit more sustainable. So I'm Jamie Green, the Solar Queen, and today I want to talk about the benefits of solar power, especially if you live in California. It doesn't matter where you live in the state these days because both in Northern California with PG&E, SMUD, and down in Southern California with SCE and SDG and E, <laughs> San Diego Gas and Electric, we're, we're, everyone is facing rate increases that are skyrocketing. I spoke with a homeowner yesterday. He was telling me that he was looking at his PG&E bill and I said, well, what are you on? Are you on time of use or are you on the tiered system? And most of the utility companies have switched or are quickly switching everyone over from the tiered billing system, which if you don't know, tiered billing means how much energy did you use in a billing cycle? And there's tier one, there's tier two, and then there's high surcharge. Most home homeowners land within tier two and, and every tier there's a certain um, rate amount attached and associated with that. Say it's 22 cents for tier one and then you go into tier two and it's 28 to 29 cents. And then you go into high surcharge and it's 45 cents for the rest of the cycle, billing cycle until that closes. For those type of homeowners, you might be experiencing four, five, six hundred dollar monthly electricity bills when you're going into high surcharge and you're on the tiered billing system. The utility companies are starting to get smart and they're moving everyone over to time of use, which means there's really two, two times you can use it. And that is non-peak and peak hours. So non-peak is any time outside of 4 and 9 p.m. So any time after 9 p.m., you're non-peak, and if you, from 4 to 9 p.m. in the afternoon, evening, is when you're being charged for peak usage. And the reason for that is because when everyone gets home from work and all the kids are home from school, they are starting to draw energy from the grid, and it requires a demand on generation and a demand on the grid to trans transfer all that energy back and forth between the, the substations to the house and from the places where energy is generated. It's all, it all has to travel. And so there's a huge demand on the grid at any, at any given time between 4 and 9 p.m. And so that is why you are starting to see more expensive rates during those peak hours, which is from 4 to 9 p.m. So you may be wondering what, which billing cycle or which billing system am I on? And the answer to that is you need to check your utility bill and see where you are, how you're being charged for your electricity. So are you being charged still on the tiered system, which some people have been able to opt out until they're gonna make it mandatory for everyone to be on time of use. But if you're still in that tiered system, the first 300 kilowatt hours is usually to tier one. And if you stay in that, you're doing a great job conserving energy and not using very much. But most homeowners that I meet with, they are going into tier two. Anything between 300 and 1,000 kilowatt hours during a billing cycle, so one month, give or take. And that's gonna land people in to the average kilowatt hour rate of about 28 cents because the rates have continued to go up even if you're on the t tiered billing system. So, so when you are on the tiered billing system and you go solar, you, because of net energy metering too, um, you are gonna get automatically switched over to time of use. So you wanna be aware of that because this means if you're used to doing a lot of things during that 4 to 9 p.m., you might wanna consider waiting on starting the dishwasher until after 9 p.m. or doing your loads of laundry in the morning time if you work from home. Doing all that, those big heavy loads of um, you know, appliances that draw loads Try and avoid doing it during those peak hours because most of the time, and I'm looking at my solar system, most of the time, all of our solar energy is generated during non-peak hours. So 
from the time the sun comes up to the time that the sun goes down. There's a time of day when you generate energy that goes into your net metering account with the utility. Think of it like a big bank account. You're depositing all these kilowatt hours that you generated during the non-peak hours and that's if you use that energy during non-peak hours, some other day or on a cloudy day, rainy day, or wintertime day, you're gonna debit from those, those net metering credits at a one-to-one -one ratio. That's really important to understand because if you generate all this power during non-peak hours, but you wanna use that power during peak hours, well, it's not a true one-to-one -one ratio, which is why if you don't get a battery or you don't want a battery, why it's important to offset your system by 15 to 20% more so that it will make up the difference in the credits and debits between non-peak and peak hours. That's a lot of information. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to make a very detailed video about net metering and how that works and how it affects your true up here in the state of California. And a true up is when you settle with the utility company. Did you use more power than your solar system was designed to generate? And if so, what is that gonna look like for you? Or did you use less energy than your solar system uh, produced for you and you're gonna get a credit? That's possible as well. If you're on the tiered billing system with, uh, before going solar and you decide to go solar, you are gonna get switched over to the time of use and you're gonna wanna try to change the way you do your life. If you've already transferred over to time of use and you are not solar powered yet, the good news is you probably have already kind of adjusted how you live, hopefully. If not, that's okay. Uh, but I would, I would encourage you to, to avoid those expensive time of day when you're using your power because you're gonna get charged more. Like the homeowner I was talking to yesterday, he's paying 36 cents for off-peak or non-peak hours and he's paying 38 cents for peak not that big of a difference but I have seen it where it's been a bigger gap and for him he's basically it doesn't matter when he uses his power and I can't explain to you why the utility companies give some people certain rates and other people people different rates I can only imagine it's based on their their energy usage habits and what they've used historically some of the things I am seeing is for EVs people that are on time of use EV uh, they have uh, off-peak peak and then super off peak. So their rate structure may be slightly less during those super off peak hours, but still, you're still on time of use and you're still getting charged way too much for your electricity. So how does solar power save you money? Well, the solar systems on our, on, that you see on people's rooftops, the goal, the objective that they're trying to, to accomplish is to um, generate all the power that they need and replace the utility company's need to provide you as a homeowner the generation, transmission, and distribution charges, which is how and what you're paying to the utility company right now. When you go solar, you go and you purchase, if you purchase the system, you're purchasing all the equipment, you're purchasing all the, the everything that the solar company is gonna do for you, the um, site survey. I just had a homeowner today get a site survey done. Um, and that's just to make sure we can spit all the panels that was, on, that was on the proposal onto her house the way that they need it and that it will do what it says that the proposal will do, which is generate X amount of kilowatt hours for them uh, with the system that was designed so that they can cut, literally cut their electricity bill in half. That is literally what we're doing for this homeowner. So cutting it in half. And the way that we do that is you can either pay cash or you can take out a loan a solar loan and you can finance the system with nothing out of pocket and as soon as that solar system is put on your rooftop obviously there's things that we have to do like get a final inspection and get interconnection with the uh, utility company and then you're officially solar powered but the whole objective is to um, get all your your electricity from the sun and pay a whole lot less than what you're paying because you have solar so in, instead of paying the utility company that continues to raise your rates, why not replace it, place it, use your rooftop for generating your power that you need for your house at a much less amount of money than if you were to continue doing what you're doing, which is getting power from the utility company and letting them continue to raise your rates on you. So that is what this homeowner that I'm about to show you 
name's Marlo. He found me on YouTube. We, he reached out to me and we set up a time to meet over Zoom. Initially it was over the phone and then we met on Zoom and then I put together a solo proposal to him. I sent it over to him. We got him pre-approved for financing. So he went solar with nothing out of pocket. He didn't have to come up with any, any amount of money to make that switch to solar and to then start saving immediately as soon as his utility company turns on his solar system. So I'm really, really excited. It's one of the things that I love doing is helping homeowners save money. And right now we are all I don't know about you, but I'm spending a lot more at the grocery store. My husband still drives a gas-powered car and he's paying a lot more for gas than he was a year ago. Everything has gone up and your utility costs are continuing to go up and with solar you can stop that by getting solar panels put on your rooftop. I hope that this video was really helpful and now check out this installation in progress. I didn't get to stay until the very end, but at least you get to see this installation in progress on this beautiful home in Folsom, California. panels going on this house. And I'm at a solar installation today here in Folsom, California. And it's really cool because this homeowner, they actually found me on YouTube. So I'm really excited to be here um, and meet the homeowner in person and see the installation in progress. Um, they're very excited to save money on their energy costs. And we were just talking about it today and the tax credit that's available for going solar, which is 26%. The things that are changing for people that live in Northern California and PG&E or even Southern California is that it may be looking like NEM 3.0 is, is, is looming out there. I still don't know what the details are on all of that, but it just makes it a safe bet to try and go solar as soon as you can to save on your energy costs because I am looking at a bill and it was 36 cents. No, so, sorry, 37 cents was the average kilowatt hour rate for this homeowner, homeowner I was speaking to that lives in Richmond, California. Here in California, when you go solar, you're gonna save a tremendous amount of money. You're gonna be grateful that you did it sooner than later. And I wanna help you. So please reach out to me if you're interested in solar for your home. I'll put the details in the um, description below and make sure that you reach out. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and um, consider subscribing to my channel to learn about all the things that you need to know about solar energy.